Good morning, Dr. Elio. Welcome to the Mahira Healthcare English Podcast. Good morning, Mahira. So, Doctor, today let's dive straight into an intriguing topic. What's on your mind for today's discussion? Well, Mahira, with winter upon us, I think it's crucial to shed some light on the synthesis of vitamin D3 and its fascinating connection to sunlight. That's intriguing, Doctor. In a nutshell, how does it work? Simply put, it starts when UVB radiation with a wavelength of 290 to 315 nanometers touches our uncovered skin. This radiation transforms cutaneous 7-dehydrocholesterol into pre-vitamin D3, which eventually becomes vitamin D3. That sounds straightforward. But here's the kicker. Did you know that UVB radiation can't penetrate glass? So, basking by the window won't do the trick. You're absolutely right, Mihira. And there's more to it. Factors like the time of day, season, location, altitude, clouds, skin type, and sunscreen can greatly affect this process, making it quite a puzzle. It's starting to get interesting. So, how much sun do we need? Well, here's the catch. It's been suggested that 5 to 30 minutes of sun exposure to the face, arms, and legs twice a week, without sunscreen, can provide adequate vitamin D. But it varies based on skin tone and sunlight intensity. Ah, so it's not one size fits all. And what if someone can't get enough sun? If sun exposure is limited, dietary sources or supplements are essential. Interestingly, you can't overdose on vitamin D from sunlight. Your skin reaches a balance where it breaks down vitamin D as quickly as it's made. That's good to know. But how can we measure our vitamin D levels? The only way to accurately gauge your vitamin D levels is through a serum 25-OH D3 calcifedial test. In some studies, it was found that a significant portion of the population, even in developed countries, has insufficient vitamin D levels. That's quite an eye-opener. And what about UV exposure in different regions? Well, UV levels vary globally. In the US, they've been tracking UV radiation across North America. Similarly, the European Space Agency provides data on UV levels worldwide. It's fascinating to see how geography plays a role. Doctor, in a nutshell, can you sum up the benefits of UV exposure? Doctor, in a nutshell, can you sum up the benefits of UV exposure? Certainly, Mihira. UV exposure not only helps with vitamin D production but also boosts mood and energy levels. That's fantastic. So, there are multiple benefits to soaking up some sun. Indeed. Vitamin D plays a vital role in calcium regulation, immunity, and more. Interestingly, populations with higher sun exposure tend to have better health outcomes. And what about supplements? Supplements can be essential, especially in regions with limited natural sources of vitamin D. Oily fish and cod liver oil are examples of foods rich in vitamin D, but they may not be sufficient for everyone. It's good to have options. And what's the link between vitamin D and health? Higher vitamin D levels are associated with reduced risks of diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. UV radiation also produces nitric oxide, which can lower blood pressure. Fascinating. And finally, any special considerations? Yes, individuals with limited sun exposure, like those with disabilities, may require extra attention to ensure they get enough vitamin D. It's a crucial factor in preventing various health issues. Thank you so much, Dr. Elio, for shedding light on this essential topic. My pleasure, Mihira. Stay informed and keep those vitamin D levels up.